Hello and welcome to today's model workshop. Today I'm going to be doing a weathering workshop with you. Uh, originally this video was going to be all about taking some tired old models that you, were, you know, perhaps weren't really happy with and trying to elevate them, but it developed into a lot more than that. So it's going to be a two-part series. Uh, the first part is going to be about colour modulation, uh, using washes and using the salt technique to get lots of colour modulation. Um, also a little bit on chipping and rust. And the second part, which will be coming out soon, is all about using uh, applying mud and uh, a bit of overspray and pigments, which I love to use. So keep an eye out for part number two. If you have any questions or if you think there's anything I've missed, please chime in in the comments below. But otherwise, let's get stuck straight in. Part number one on how to weather scale models. Cheers. Hello and welcome to today's model workshop. Today I'm going to show you how you can take some tired old kits and um, elevate them to the next level. Um, I've got two kits here that I made oh, about five years ago. They're both looking a bit the worse for wear. <clears throat> the actual build is fine on both of them. So we've got a white Scout car and an early Sherman. The The actual build is fine. You know, on the Sherman I've used a lot of photo etch, some really detailed stuff there. You can see those sort of brackets above the headlights and stuff. Um, quite a lot of photo etch. The, the browning is quite well done. Um, so the build, you know, the bones are really good, but they just don't look very you know, sophisticated. They're not quite the level I'm appreciating these days. So my plan is to do some good weathering and some washes and some pin washes and really just, you know, bring them to a level that I'm happy with and maybe even incorporate them into a diorama. So let's see how we go. What's so you can see here in the sun that they're fairly monotone. I've tried in the past to you know, get a bit of highlighting on the Sherman but the Scout car it is one colour. It's not great. I've done a bit of dry brushing but pff, it's nothing. So the first thing I'm going to do is to get some JN green, some darkish green paint and just paint around the door panels, try to get a bit of shadows here and there. So it's quite thin and low air pressure, really you know, we want subtle washes. So I'll try this, hopefully you can hear me over the top of the airbrush and my neighbour dropping things. So you can hopefully see there already just the effect that this is having. Now don't worry if it looks a bit cartoonish because really this is the first step of many. We are going to be doing a lot to get this better overall. Um, like I said, the Sherman, not such an issue. We've got a bit of tonal modulation there already, but the Scout car, my goodness, it needs it. So I might, yeah, I'll come back to the Sherman. I'll move on to the Scout car so you can see the effect. The Scout car, both these are ancient, ancient kits. Uh, the Scout car is a 1960s kit and the Sherman is an old um, Italery kit. It's atrocious quality, but yeah, I made it and I still like the kit. So I'm going to keep going and then show you the effect that this has when I'm finished. Once that paint's dry, our next step is to do a lighter layer using the salt method. So I've got a spray can with just plain old water and I've got some sea salt. Um, I recommend using sea salt or kosher salt. Uh, the flakes you get compared to just sort of granular salt, the flakes you'll get are a lot more random and a bit more yeah, effective. So all we're doing light spraying overall using the sprayer. Keep it in the camera David. Um, for both of them Light overall spray. Yeah, there's no right or wrong amount. Whatever feels good. <clears throat> and then sprinkle sea salt over. Easy peasy. So you're after just yeah, nice irregular splats. Something like that. So you can already see. Let's try and get this more on camera. So you can already see the sea salt that's on there. And we're after just, yeah, irregular dollops of salt everywhere. If you spot any bits that are missing it, like around here, quick spray, shaky, 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 and then leave it out in the sun to dry. I also like to try and get the sides, which is a little harder. You have to kind of let the gravity work with you, otherwise the salt 
and the water just dribbles off. I'm also going to try and fix up this decal here because it went on badly, it silvered really badly, so I'm going to try and hide that decal in particular as much as possible. <clears throat> Get the idea? So, you'll know it's ready when all the water is gone. So, I'm doing three vehicles here today, one other one, um, all of them getting this sort of sand treatment, uh, sorry, salt treatment, and yeah, that's all you need to see. There's no water left on any of those three guys. So, the next step is a very, very diluted and very low pressure covering of a light paint. I go with white. It's totally up to you what you want to use, but I go with white, but the trick here, very, very light. If you do it too thick, it's just going to look cartoonish. So, you almost can't see it, and that's exactly what you want. I'll keep going, and I'll come back in a minute. So once you fellows look like this, you're good to go. All the water's evaporated, you've got this lovely crystalline salt surface. And, yeah, the next step is to spray with a very light colour. Um, I would recommend white, that's what I usually use, but, you know, it's up to you. The real trick here is really, really thin your paint and really, really low PSI. I'm thinking 20 PSI tops. Um, <clears throat> so you want to build this up very gradually. If you do it too heavy-handed, it's going to look cartoonish. You're going to have this really weird looking blotchy 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 white snow effect and it looks crap so let's see what we can do so at the moment 20 psi got my thinned white paint and it's really you know you just want to do a dusting you'll see the paint collect on your little salt crystals and basically if you almost can't see it happening that's a good sign that means it's working and it's not going to look too cartoonish um, I've done it before and it has come out looking cartoonish and I hated it. So that would be my main advice to you. Like I said, you almost can't see the effect, then that's good. Because you'd be surprised when you wash off all that salt how quickly it comes to show the white. And like I said, you don't want it to look cartoonish. I reckon that's it for the scout car, so I'll move on to my other two. Paint is dry. We need to get rid of all the salt. So, do it in the sink. I recommend putting the plug in, in case any small pieces come off. And really, just with your finger. Let's see if we can get that on camera. So yeah, just with your finger, brushing off the salt. Be careful of any details on your paint. And, yeah. That's as complicated as it gets. I'll show you the results in just a sec. So this is where we're at after the last video. We have got some decent uh, colour modulation on both of them now. That salt effect has really paid off. So we've got this lovely white, you know, faded paint look throughout. Um, you can see it on the sides here as well. A lot more colour modulation. Just try and zoom in there for you. Yeah, a lot more colour modulation than we originally started with. Um, my next step is to try and fix the insignia on the front of the scout car. So I'll just turn that back around and get it nice and close for you. So you can see here that I've put the decal down and it's gone over the two panels and it's never ever settled into those panel lines. So my plan is cut it with a scalpel and use some Mr. Mark Sofavar to make it settle in those holes there. So just nice and gentle, tracing down, breaking that. And you know what? It's a little bit brittle, a little bit old, but I don't mind, it's going to look like there is uh, some chipping in the paint. You know what? I'm actually not going to worry about the Mr. Mark Softener. Oh no, I will a tiny bit, but already that looks better. Next up, a pin wash using some Van Dyke Brown Ibis oils. So all I do is 
splodge a little into an old container here. Got a nice glob of it on the edge there. And then use thinners, just cheapo store bought thinners, to dilute that down and do a pin wash. So, I'm trying to do this on camera for you. Just putting drips of thinners onto that. Um, I use this one jar all the time for this, so it's always the same colour, and you always get, you know, artisans take such a long time to dry that you can always, you know, resurrect some down the bottom. So I'm going to do some artist washes right now. Let's try and zoom in. Right about there looks good to me. A bit thick still. But anyway get the idea we'll come back to that in so if you have a look here you can see how the the wash is really bringing out the details of all these raised nuts and bolts once this dries off perfect it's just gonna make it stand out even more and you know what if it leaves weird little uh, evaporation marks it's just extra wear and tear and grime it's not a bad thing a little bit here you can see the sort of consistency that first one was just way too thick you really do want it to just soak into those lines there perfect and here is the old girl after an oil pin wash so sadly a lot of bits fell off uh, obviously I didn't put enough glue on five six years ago when I was building this so quite a few pieces came off with that thinner kicking in. Um, the Sherman, I didn't go quite so overboard just because I really really like this light surface that it's got here. I really didn't want to ruin that by splodging on too much oil. So I've done a bit draping out of the uh, petrol tank there, a bit of a pin wash around that rear deck, a little bit just picking up details on the hull on the turret. So things like the little Things like this little piece just here, where you can really get in there and get the detail. But um, <clears throat> overall, the Scout car, although it needs a fair bit of repairs, it's definitely looking better than it was, you know, this time 24 hours ago. So, yeah, I'm very happy. It's looking suitably beaten up, <laughs> particularly when it's missing its wheels. Our next step is chipping. So this will be done in a two-step process. First off, we're going to do a slightly lighter tone. So I've mixed up a lighter tone of the olive drab just in here. Uh, used a bit of yellow, a bit of white, a bit of original olive drab. So we're going to use this as the sort of chipped paint around the darker tone, which we'll put on later on. So grab your handy dandy little bit of sponge. And just chip where you think it would be chipping off from the paintwork. So obviously you know, around doors, etc. Quite a lot of chipping there. And we're going to go over this later on with the darker chipping colour. show you how that's looking. You get the idea there. Once that's done, the second part, so you can see if I get in nice and close here, you can see where the chipping is, slightly yellower sections. Yeah, let's try and get this up nice and close. So you can see the yellower sections there, that's quite distinctly obvious. So the second part of this is to get a darker chipping colour. So I use AK Interactive chipping colour. It's AK711. And same deal with that. So get your sponge. Pop it on it. Uh, I recommend just daubing off a little bit. Otherwise it's just too hardcore, too full on. When it's about when it's about like that, you know it's ready to go. And 
then just get stuck in. So you want it to look like the chipping is where you've put your paint already and the paint is really just the edges of the chips. So something like that. I'll do a little bit and zoom in close and you can see it in a second. And this gives you a bit of a sense of what we're after. So that door there has had quite a bit of chipping attached, and quite a bit of chipping painted on and yeah, I think we're looking pretty good. If you're really worried about the rustiness, we'll add rusty streaks later on to really yeah, bump and up the Here's some there. that I have done to the Sherman. So you can see where I've done some really gentle ones around there, a um, couple of little splats sort of around here. Uh, a few around there, a little tiny bit there, and some around the hatches at the front here. So, yeah, sort of there and there, and a little bit just around here and here. So, yeah, I think uh, the Sherman is probably a slightly better version, actually. Uh, perhaps a tiny bit too heavy-handed on the Scout car. But, you know what? The beauty of weathering, you can always cover it up with mud and dust. So yeah, happy with the Sherman, not so happy with this, but we'll keep on going. Keep an eye out for part two of this video, which is where we'll be going through applying mud, using pigments, I love that bit, um, tying it all together, spraying a little bit over it to you know, really just tone it all together, and um, finishing steps. Cheers guys, enjoy.